So I just finished a novel. It's kind of a dystopian sci-fi thriller. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing to launch this book, this version of the book. It's a little complicated, so I'm going to talk about some things that I've done wrong and some things that I might do in the future um, to boost sales. So let me show you first the cover for the first edition. Um, and what I had done was last year I published half books when I got started, partly because um, it was difficult for me to finish a first book. I, I didn't have experience writing and finishing novels, so that was a challenge. Um, so I started just getting halfway and calling it not quits, but I wanted to see how my books played out in the actual market um, and see which books were most popular, which ideas I should really follow up on. So this was one book uh, that I I started from the cover, which is also something different that I've done that um, most authors don't do. I had this cover um, that I made for a client and it didn't get used and I always really liked it. So I started writing a book a story for this cover um, and that's how it got started. And I really liked it, but I didn't finish it. I put out part one. Um, and the other thing that I've done with my other books is that I put out part one as a perma-free book for a long time, maybe six months. Uh, my perma-free books tend to, to rank pretty well, so I get a lot of downloads. That's a really good way for me to build my platform and my email list for free, so that's worked really well. And then what I've been trying to figure out is when I have the half book, how do I relaunch the full book now that I have part two? Um, so what I have done for some other projects is that I just took the part one on Amazon. You can just upload the file anytime. So I just uploaded um, a new file with part two, which has part one and part two. It's double the length. What I found was earlier when I had a primer free book and I switched to paid on Kindle, um, because I had ranked so well and I had so many downloads with the Primer Free book, it was really easy for my paid book to have a high rank and to keep selling pretty easily. Um, so that was kind of a hack that I was um, excited about, but it's not as effective as it was when I was doing it like six months ago. So now when I took this book off of Primer Free and I made it into a paid book, um, it hasn't been performing well. Part of that reason was that it wasn't in KU, Kindle Unlimited anymore. Um, so my rank was at like 200,000, which I think is not a super rank. You're not really selling your books if you're at 200,000. Um, I recently updated the cover, so I'm going to show you the new cover, and then I put it back in KU. So without doing anything else with the new cover and putting it back into KU, it's now at about 60 or 70,000 most of the time. Um, it already has almost, it has over 100 reviews, so like 110 reviews. But even so, at, at six or 70,000, that's not where I want um, the book to be. Let me show you the, the new cover and also the, um, the evolution. So this was the original. I've also found that um, close-up face covers like this, they don't tend to perform as well as just a character in the scene. These are kind of the four covers that I've gone through. So this was the original. I tried to remake it a little bit, make it a little cooler with a better face. Um, that's the one that it hasn't been performing very well. And then just recently, um, I changed it up some more to get to this cover, which is what I'm using now. Um, this is a much stronger cover. It shows a girl, you know, standing in a dystopian wasteland. Um, it's not orange and yellow because orange yellow is mostly for post-apocalyptic like nuclear warfare. This is more of a almost a fantasy. It's a time travel fantasy sci-fi. Uh, I added a gun and a sword because characters with guns and sword tend to perform better. It shows immediate action. Um, anyway, so this cover is performing better, which is great, but it's not quite where I want to be yet. So the other things that I'm doing to reboost the series, um, it is a little tricky because my following, my readers have already probably downloaded or bought this book in the past, so now they can't get the full updated version. So I have to upload the full version, the new version. Um, I'm using BookFunnel to give away ARC advanced reader copies. So I put a book up on BookFunnel. I can email my list and say, you know, the new book with the, the final versions and chapters is um, available and I ask them to download it. And then if they like it, I ask them to, um, to go review it on Amazon. But I will also, when this book is um, it's um, it's the 26th today. I'm going to relaunch it hard on the 29th. Um, so I'm going to email my list on the 29th and say the new version is out. If you haven't got the book on Kindle and you want to support me, 
you can buy it for 99 cents, it's a 99 cent deal. Um, it's not gonna get a huge amount of conversion because like I said, my list has already gotten this book earlier, which is probably a mistake um, on my part. But I'll, tell, I'll talk more about that in a minute. So the other things I've, I've been going to do, um, I will put it out to my personal Facebook page. I usually don't market my books on my Facebook because my friends and family, um, they wanna support me, but they're not really my ideal readers anyway. So when you get a whole bunch of random people to buy a book on Amazon, that's really gonna screw up your also bots on your, on your Amazon section, which means you know maybe my mom buys a certain kind of book. They're not really similar to my book. So when she buys the book, um, whatever else she's shopping for on Amazon might show up in those also bots. And that's not really what I want. I want my also bots to be very um, concise and only other relevant books that are attractive to readers who are going to like this book. So other best-selling dystopian time travel books. Um, that's what I want my also bots to be populated with. That's something I can do deliberately by targeting readers who like those books um, or doing uh, very targeted ads with Facebook or Amazon where I'm um, showing the ad to people who have liked authors or books that are similar to my book. And even if I'm not getting great ROI, return on investment for those ads, um, if I get some sales and there, there are people who buy that type of book, that's really going to clean up my also bots. I do want lots of also bots so that my book is showing up all over Amazon whenever somebody is looking at a similar book on Amazon. Um, so that's what I want to focus on. However, because this book needs a push, it's not doing as well as I, I want it to be doing, I am going to be looking to get a lot of sales quickly, even if it's not my ideal audience. So if I get 100 sales um, in a day, that'll put me at around 1,000 in the Kindle store, which is really where I want to be. It'd be great if I break into the 1,000 um, area in the Kindle store, which will take 100 sales, 150 sales. Um, so that's really what I'm shooting for. I've also lined up a bunch of newsletter swaps, which just means um, for the last several months, I've been trying to network with other sci-fi dystopian authors. This is kind of a new genre for me because most of my other stuff has been more fantasy. So I've been building relationships with other sci-fi authors and trying to build content or share those books with my list so that they know who I am and that they're willing to do me a favor when I need it. So now I've um, lined up about five or six of them. They have lists of between 20 and 30,000 on average. So that's about 100,000 people that they will email my book out to. Hopefully that'll equal 50 to 100 sales. Um, I've also paid for some advertising on the book promo sites. So I don't remember specifically, whoops, my light just turned off, hold on a sec. So the light that I brought from America to Portugal just blew up because um, I didn't have the right electronic converter and I didn't um, consider the voltage. So I'm just going to finish this video quickly without the light. I was talking about the book promos I've booked. Um, ideally, if you do a book launch, you want to basically book advertising on all the big book promo sites and do ad stacking. I didn't do um, that big a launch, but I think I probably booked ads on two or three different sites. Probably something like Bargain Booksy, Fussy Librarian, um, E-Reader News Today. You have to kind of apply to several and see which ones will take you. So I have that going on. Also, those will go out to probably another 100,000 readers. Um, ideally, that will get some more sales at 99 cents. And so altogether, if I get you know 100 sales, 150 sales, I should see my rank get up into the 1,000 range or so. Um, I don't think my description of this book is good enough yet, and that's gonna be a problem for me, but at least if I can get a couple uh, 100 sales, a couple hundred sales, in the next few days, um, I'll get a lot of visibility and it'll boost my rank. And ideally, with the new cover, um, my book will stick above 10,000. That's kind of what I shoot for. If it's not sticking above 10,000, um, then I need to do more work. Most of my books right now aren't at above 10,000. Um, they were for a while, for the first few months. And they tend not, like it's difficult to keep a book performing well if you're not doing a lot of promotion or driving traffic or ads to it. Uh, but anyway, that, that's a promotion that I'm doing right now. Something that I'm considering because, like I said, it's difficult to keep the momentum going um, unless you're spending a lot on ads, which is something I need to get better at, uh, especially Amazon advertising. But it can be expensive and time-consuming to get to be running ads all the time. And what I prefer to do is to have a perma-free book that leads to the to the paid book. And so what I am going to probably start experimenting with, even 
um, with this book. Because basically I put out the first half book, which is part one, it's about 50,000 words. And now I've combined um, the second half, which is another 50,000 words, into one book that's 100,000 words. That's a normal size novel. However, when people are buying books on, on Amazon, especially if it's a perma-free book or a 99 cent book, um, they can be a lot shorter. It's very feasible to have a 50,000 word book um, that readers are satisfied with. So what I would like to do, and what's gonna be smarter for me, is to go back and break up these longer books that I, I tend to write longer books. So I'm gonna go back and break them up. Um, the first 50,000 words of part one can be perma-free. I can also, if it's perma-free, I can put it out wide, which means on all available platforms, which means it's gonna be a lot easier for me to get a BookBub um, promotion deal for those perma-free books because they're wide. I, I believe that's gonna be the case. Um, and BookBub is huge if you can get a BookBub. It's been harder for me to get them uh, because I'm all in Kindle Unlimited. And I think they're not accepting as many in Kindle Unlimited as they were before. So what, I'm, what I'd like to go back and do is have part one be perma-free and part two be 99 cents rather than trying to switch my perma-free book into um, a new book and it'll actually work a lot better because then if I have the part one is perma-free I can just direct people to the 99 cent book um, which will be the like the completed story of, of part one. I think most readers who are happy with a 50k perma-free book and they want to read the rest of the story they'll be happy to pay 99 cents for it. Um, if not, they're not really my ideal readers anyway because of course I do want to make money with my books so I think it's fine to um, ask them for 99 cents, which is not a lot of money to finish a book. And then from book two, book three, I'll have full completed novels. So that way my funnel will be perma-free part one, 99 cent book, um, 99 cent part two. That'll be the first full book. And then 299 or 399 for book two, book three, book four of the series. That's probably something I'm going to start doing. Um, the nice thing about that model is that I won't really need to do a lot of promotion or advertising because those perma-free books will keep attracting new readers, especially because I have so many different um, types of series that I'm mapping out. So I'll have, you know, five different perma-free books that lead into different series. That's something I can set up pretty quickly. I will have to go back and revise things um, and split my books up, but that's probably going to be my next move because otherwise, you know, after the books have been out several months, it's more and more difficult to continue selling them. I have my, my audience, my readership, I can pay for ads, but unless you're doing constant promotion or advertising um, or relaunching every couple months, it's difficult to keep them sticking. The other thing, of course, is I could just be writing really fast, really hard, and every couple months be launching a new book, like the next book in the series. If you launch the next book in the series, um, the previous books in the series are gonna take off and start performing really well again. But because I'm working on lots of different series at the same time, it might be another year before I get the next book in the series out. In the meantime, those first books are gonna stagnate unless I have um, the first part on perma-free. So that's probably gonna be my new strategy going forward. It's gonna take some re-adjustment and organizing, um, but that's something I'll probably uh, go back and do and then commit to for the rest. A lot of the stuff that I do, it's weird and readers react negative to react negatively to it at first. They kind of say, you know, I hate the, the I hate the way the author is doing this. I don't like, you know, only getting the first half for free and then having to pay for the other half. Some readers will leave comments like that, but really if you have a high quality book, if you have good writing um, and you're giving a lot of content, like Perma-Free only works if you're giving them a substantial, a substantial chunk of the story. Um, enough to hook their interest. If they like it, if they enjoy it, and they want more of the story, then it's okay to ask them to pay for it. And if they're, um, especially if you're building a relationship with your fans, they know you and they like you, they're gonna be willing to, to pay out 99 cents to get um, more and to support you as an author. I usually will also say something like, even for the people on my list, I'll probably say, if you want to read the other half of this perma-free book, you can get it for free if you sign up to my list or you can buy it for 99 cents. And then once they're on my list, I'll ask them, you know, if they want to support me by buying it, that's great. If not, you know, when book two comes out and they can um, continue reading the series by buying book two at 299, that's really the path that I'll take. So sorry about the, the light um, crapping out on me and this video finishing kind of weird, but um, hopefully,
talking about how I'm revising, revamping, relaunching this um, book might help you out with your own book marketing. Thanks. Bye-bye.